Hello, this is Fabian from Lifesparring.com. A while ago, I did an unboxing video of this beautiful piece of uh, technology, the WeThings uh, body scan, the newest WeThings um, scale with body composition and a lot of other features. And yeah, I'm using the scale now for about two months. Time to do a follow up and uh, a proper review, um, especially comparing it to this piece here. It's a much older body composition monitor um, from Omron, a um, Japanese manufacturer that I have been using for the past decade. And um, yeah, I will also go a little bit into detail and compare the WeThings results, um, especially on body composition with a DEXA scan that I recently did. I will get into details what a DEXA scan is um, and of course into the differences. So in general, if you're interested in unboxing and starting from, from scratch, setup, etc., watch the other video first. So today um, I'm not covering this anymore. I'm going straight into the functionality of the scale um, and the app. And um, yeah, if you are primarily interested in the accuracy of the body composition part, then you might just want to skip straight to the comparison part um, I will have some chapters here. Just go scroll down and then click to um, the respective chapter. This being said, let's um, dive um, straight in. Ah, before I do this, one more thing. If you prefer a written review that goes quite into detail and is about 3,200 words long, then go to lifesparing.com and you will find it right away. Of course, links here also in the description. But now let's really jump straight in and take a look at WeThink's body scan and um, the results um, in the HealthMate app. Okay, so even if I have to take the risk here um, to turn you off with my ugly feet, I still thought it makes sense to show you how a typical way in looks on the scale. So this is me stepping onto the scale. Then the scale starting to lock in the weight. So that always takes a little bit um, after. Yeah, I mean, I'm still shifting a little bit back and forth, taking position, but then it locks it in. Then it locks in the profile. So here it was quite easy. It immediately got me. Sometimes if you shift a bit left and right, then it might rotate through profiles. Um, it shows you the weight trend. Um, changes in, from the last uh, way in fat percentage, muscle percentage, then visceral fat, the water percentage, here quite low actually, bone percentage, and then the ECG starts. So this is 30 seconds now of you staring at my feet with uh, an ECG happening uh, invisibly in the background. Um, it's a nice morning meditation, 30 seconds, just standing on your scale and waiting. Yeah, we're almost there. Last 10 seconds here. And three, two, one, zero, and the result. Sinus rhythm here, so nothing extraordinary, luckily. Um, heart rate was 74. Um, this is the pulse wave velocity, then the vascular age, nerve health, and then comes weather and air quality. Um, that's all that I have here. So that's 137, 138, um, 1 minute 38 seconds, roughly for a typical way. Okay, so. We think software piece that uh, accompanies the body scan and also all the other We Think's devices is called HealthMate, and it's of course available for Android and for iOS. I have here the iOS version fired up on my iPhone, and I will um, just dive right in. So here we go. So this is how the app um, looks like. Home screen. It's still loading. Um, yeah, on top. Um, usually news, some highlights. In this case, I outdid myself yesterday. So basically I did a long run yesterday and um, that gets the um, app excited. 
I can also still give feedback. I actually did already and shared uh, my findings with WeThings. Uh, they haven't uh, come back to me yet. Then latest measurements. Um, okay, 42 steps. I did a few more, but it's not yet updated. We will get to this. So this is pretty much kind of the home screen. Um, usually the home screen is kind of sorted in, in order of events. So pretty much you see the lower you scroll down, the older um, are the data points that you see here. The more orderly part um, in the app is here the dashboard. So here you have multiple dashboards for multiple users. I have two user profiles uh, generated or created, one for me, one for my wife. Of course, um, since women are always a bit more sensitive, I will not share any data from the wife. Um, in the dashboard, it's a bit more logically sorted. So you have activity on top. Activity, of course, comes in via sync from Apple Health and um, yeah, to Apple Health, um, it goes from my Garmin. Then body, that's pretty much all the measurements, some um, body fat, bone mass, height, etc. Some of them I preset, like height, of course, is not measured by the, the body scan, um, body fat, bone mass. These are all um, the WeThings measurements, so is nerve health, etc. Then comes the heart-related stuff, ECG, pulse wave velocity, vascular age. And on the bottom, I have nutrition, which is um, a direct link of my fitness pal where I'm currently tracking um, calories. I'm not doing that all the time, but since I'm a bit on a diet at the moment, um, I am tracking there. Yeah, so this is pretty much um, what you can see. Uh, if we go into it, yeah, activity, I think, is not super interesting since it's just displaying data that you recorded somewhere else. So it's pretty much just timelines, etc. Um, not that exciting. The more interesting stuff is indeed the body measurements. So if you go into body fat, you see the default um, of the dashboard is usually you have a little bit of a timeline on top with a headline here it says i'm losing muscle even though this is not particular correct but <laughs> we get into this um yeah so you see actually my muscle trends quite well up so no idea why it says i'm losing muscle here in the headline um yeah you can swap via this um, top bar between week month quarter year then, of course, it's always kind of changing the averages um, for the data point that it takes. So normally months is quite good because um, yeah, even though it still has more or less a day to day variation, um, I like quarter because quarter gives you weekly um, values. And yeah, if I'm looking at something like weight, um, this is actually quite nice. So. Yeah, maybe we start with weight first because that's the easier one. So as I said, quarter gives you weekly averages and then you see kind of how my week on week, my weight step by step dropped um, over the last one and a half months since I'm starting kind of to diet a bit more aggressively. So yeah, you have body mass index here for weight. Um, that's of course not changing much. Um, you have always here tied in educational stuff like uh, yeah, tutorials, uh, explanation videos, etc. And you have some options here. And what you here also can always do is you can see all data. So then you get a list view of all your measurements. This is also quite useful if you want to um, yeah, delete data points, etc. So you can delete single data points, um, which is quite important if you measure for example outside like i mean let's say you go for a run and after you're coming back for a run you want to check uh, if you how much water you lost so you step again on the scale but you maybe do not want to have this on your timeline because this is outside of your normal morning uh, weight in and uh, yeah it doesn't indicate any weight loss um, if you are after a run uh, 2kg lighter right so this is quite useful and you can also share a health report here so you can 
that's pretty much a PDF snapshot of your data that you can share with a doctor or like a personal trainer, etc. Um, actually, that's something I, I must give WeThinks credit for in general. So there are a lot of different ways how to get data out of their app. And I think that this is something that deserves really credit since a lot of companies lock your data in and take ownership of it without giving you um, any agency over it. And that's, in my point of view, not fair. It's my data, so I should be able to do whatever I want with it. So I give them, of course, um, also certain rights to use the data. Um, but essentially, I still want to have the agency and uh, the authority to move the data into another app, move it into Excel, do a Power BI uh, analysis um, of certain data, cross-reference to other data, etc., etc., etc. So as I said, this is really, really great with WeThings. Um, they let you do a lot of stuff with your own data. Yeah, so that's pretty much typical. So the other dashboards are similar. So if you go to, uh, we looked at the body fat previously, same setup. So you have again on top um, the timeline view where you can change. Um, then you can scroll down. Um, you have yeah, a few different breakdowns here because this is pretty much if you go on, on, on body fat or muscle, this is all leading to the same screen. So these are disconnected body composition screens. I think we will go later back into it when we get to this comparison um, piece. But yeah, so if you go into body composition, you have the segmental body composition where you then see fat mass and muscle mass um, for different parts of your body namely legs, arms, torso. <laughs> Quite interestingly, fat mass is always in percentage um, of body weight. Muscle mass is always in kg. Why they are not linking those and, and using the same way um, to express this is a little bit beyond me because of course it's, yeah, I mean, it's a bit weird, right? So if you have body fat in percentage, then why not also having muscle in percentage? Or just do kind of like a click toggle between um, between absolute weight and percentage. Yeah. So if they say here middle middle, um, this refers not. Um, yeah, this is refers to comparison to their database. So if your muscle mass is middle, it means you are somewhere in the middle of their user base. If you click again here on torso, then yeah, you see a little bit of a breakdown on, on how that comparison to the overall um, group of users compares. If you go on arms, it breaks down left and right arm, which is also quite important. I mean, the DEXA shows those details. And of course, I mean, if you are playing tennis um, and you are right-hander, you might have um, quite a bit of difference in muscle mass between your different limbs. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Now you see one bug that I have. Like if I am on this detail breakdown, for whatever reason, I can't really get out of it. I can still toggle, but I cannot like leave with this X that you see on the upper left corner next to the clock. There's a small X, but I cannot reach it for whatever reason on my iPhone 13. I'm not able to leave this menu and the only way to do it is to really kind of close the app <laughs> and then go back uh, to square one. A um, little bit of a um, UI bug there. No idea um, why this has not been fixed or if it's something that only I experience, but it's uh, it's there all the time. Okay, so now that we are back, let's take a look uh, into some other measurements um, outside of weight and body composition that the body scan does. So the body scan is marketed as a connected health station. And um, yeah, the focus from WeThings is definitely on um, providing pretty much a full picture of your health. And um, yeah, I think that's something that's quite compelling uh, about the body scan. So let's dive a little bit um, into it. So yeah, back in the app dashboard, and we talked a little bit about body um, previously. So in the body, we still have the nerve health um, topic. So nerve health is here under body. What is a nerve health um, 
score. Nerve health is an indication of your nervous system control of sweat gland activity in your feet. So basically, there's some electrostimulation going on, um, stimulating the sweat glands um, on the bottom of your feet. And um, yeah, we think draws some general conclusion about the state of your um, nerve system. I think this is um, primarily, of course, some um, interesting maybe for people with diabetes or so, where um, usually, yeah, this is a much bigger problem, right? Um, so my nerve score is um, 87 and is pretty stable, so it looks fine. Then under heart comes um, the really interesting stuff. So ECG is a proper electrocardiogram and we think says it's yeah it's um this is the reason why the device is still not yet um yeah released in the US because i think um, they are still in the process of um getting the ECG accredited and yeah this is uh, quite interesting because yeah an ECG is something that you typically would do once or twice per year when you're doing your medical checkup. And to do this on a regular basis, I think is quite compelling because yeah, the idea is of course to find anomalies much earlier. And even if it's maybe not 100% um, reliable, I mean, it still has some, a high chance of, yeah, giving you some signals um, that you could act on. So what does it do? It takes around 30 seconds um, to measure. I think you saw that in the video um, where we are, where I'm showing um, the different um, screens. And um, yeah, it records through um, multiple um, diodes in the handle um, and in the in the uh, foot port um, your ECG. And I think that this is a bit similar to. I think if you remember, like if you're taking an ECG in, um, yeah, at your doctor's place, you get uh, the olds like yeah around your upper body, um, at your ankles, um, at your arms, and yeah, they're measuring your heartbeat and the uh, electric um, activity of your heart with multiple um, diodes. And yeah, we think tries kind of to do something similar with the handle. So what you can do is you can replay it that's a bit gimmicky since yeah i'm not a medical expert and i cannot really tell you too much uh, what that means but yeah it's kind of fun to see your heartbeat um, like you're kind of used to it um, to see in a doctor's um, office so i have a sinus rhythm it's fine sinus rhythm means that it's yeah between 50 and 99 beats so pretty much normal for just standing still um, on a scale and um yeah, it's beating regular. So again, here, right, the, like the opportunity to share a health report with a health practitioner if you have to. And, um, I think that's pretty much to it. So is it actionable? Yeah, maybe not if it comes with a normal result. But if there would be ever um, an abnormal result, I would definitely take it serious and probably, um, depending also how I feel, um, schedule a doctor visit. So that's the ECG. Then there is pulse wave velocity. And pulse wave velocity is something, to be honest, I didn't hear about before um, I heard of the body scan. Um, this is another measure that is um, yeah, taking or tries to make assumptions about your cardiovascular health. And uh, primarily it, um, yeah, pretty much measures like how your blood flows through your veins. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's how I would kind of uh, describe it. Um, so if you see the, the detailed information in the app, um, yeah, pretty much your heartbeat creates a, a wave of blood flow um, through um, your um, aorta and through your arteries and um, yeah, this is the pressure change is somehow measurable and can give an um, indicator of if you have clocked up arteries or if you have a pretty healthy um, arterial system. So um, 
as you can see, right, with every like item that you have um, within the app, there's always immediately links to detailed um, knowledge pages um, that include also then even research studies, etc. So you can go quite deep um, on all those measures um, if you want to. So again, my pulse wave velocity is quite fine. So it's um, normal, um, close to optimal. I can live with this, but again, right? So this is interesting, I think. I mean, the beauty in general, right, of everything quantified self and home measurement is that you are able to measure yourself over a longer period of time and you get a baseline. And then it's much easier to spot, hey, there's something different suddenly. What can cause it? Is there an underlying health issue? And I think that this is really a big difference to doing a health checkup once per year, where you once per year get a snapshot, but this snapshot also reflects pretty much on, yeah, just what went on on that particular day or the weeks um, like leading up to the doctor visit, right? So for example, I did my health check, my last one in Malaysia during Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year um, is always between January and February. This year it was early in January. Um, and that is close to Christmas. And as you can imagine, I did not live my healthiest pretty much from November till end of January. Um, hence, my health screening looked not particularly great this year. But yeah, I mean, that's, um, that's as I said, is the, is the nature of this kind of snapshot health data. It's, it's a snapshot. And here you have the opportunity to record baseline levels and then over time see if there are changes. And yeah, that could indicate, of course, an underlying health issue. That's it pretty much about uh, pulse wave um, velocity. There's also vascular age. Um, and that's putting things together. So yeah, I'm 45 years old this year. So my vascular age is 42 to 46. Um, that is pretty much <laughs> in line with the expectation. And yeah, I think vascular age is pretty much, as I understand it, um, largely based also on the uh, pulse wave velocity. So yeah, I think here, learn more as usual, right? So what does it say here? But um, yeah, my understanding is now it's just a variation of the pulse wave velocity. The pulse wave velocity gave you kind of like a general um, value, um, but that's maybe harder to relate to. So I think the cardiovascular age is basically just another way to make it a little bit more clear to you. Are you younger or older than your physical age uh, when it comes to the function of your vascular system? And um, yeah, so mine is fairly normal, I would say, right? Not spectacular, better than my physical age, but it's decent. Yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, what is there to do about those measures. Um, we talked a little bit about linked uh, apps um, in the unboxing experience, but let me go here into detail a bit. This is the My Devices screen. That's pretty much yeah the section where you can do um, setups of data. There are a few things. Of course, the configuration, etc. You can customize screens here. So that means for each user, you can decide, for example, if you want to have an ECG or not. So if somebody says, that it's not interesting for me, I want to do it quick. I don't want to stand one and a half minutes on the scale. You could take um, the ECG measure out. Um, if you are not interested in the weather forecast for your location, the air quality, you can take those out. What I took out is the BMI and also the steps because there's no benefit in the morning when I'm waiting um, that uh, yeah, the app tells me that I have done 50 steps so far. I mean, that's just useless. And BMI is just, yeah, it's a slow indicator. It's limited uh, of limited use. Um, I mean, at the end, body composition is, is much more important than yeah, this calculated BMI. So I don't care um, to see it on the scale screen every day. That's pretty much what you can do here. There's tutorials. I mean, you see also what you already watched um, and yeah, you see all recommended tutorials, etc. 
there's, as I said, there's a lot of tutorials tied in. And then from the tutorials, often you can get to more literature, to about text, to blogs. So there is a lot of knowledge. Um, and I mean, WeThinks definitely does a lot there and tries to explain what they're doing um, with the device. There's also the um, Help Center. And then the last tab that we still have left is the Profile tab. So yeah, there you see my height and my age. Um, there's the health report option again. You can here share a health report. Um, you can decide the time frame. You can then choose what you will be sharing. Um, and as I said, it's a customized way to share your data in form of a PDF. And that's maybe something or that, that we think things you would probably use um, at the later point in time um, to share with your doctor. This is how it looks like. Then what you also have here are achievements. And this is for me the most useless feature of the app. Yeah, I mean, generally gamification for me is, it needs to be good to work. And this is really not something that motivates me uh, to walk more or whatever, kind of to know that I walked around Loch Ness or something like this. Um, yeah, it's kind of giving you incentives, batches for steps, for distance, for elevation. For weight, strangely, I didn't even get those, even though I measure every day. So I don't know why I'm not getting uh, my batches. But as I said, I do not. I couldn't care less. Um, there is more gamification and more guidance um, built in. If you also subscribe to the Health Plus app, I didn't do that. So I opted out. I should have maybe opted in for the free months so that I can review it. Um, that's a little bit of an oversight um, from my side. And I couldn't do it at a later point in time. So there is no option to sign up for Health Plus um, inside the app. So yeah, I can't talk about it. Um, leave it to somebody else to try this one out. But so far, based on what they're doing here in terms of gamification, I don't think that this um, yeah, guidance towards a healthy lifestyle is something that I would benefit from. Nothing I would be interested um, in. But yeah, maybe it works for some other people. Goals, right? I'm at the moment, I'm still trying to reduce my weight below 85 kg, almost there. Um, then I have to think about new goals. I have a daily step goal to stay active in addition to, to my sport. Yeah. So then here we get to apps. And this is um, the part that I talked previously um, about. There are not so many apps um, that you can connect to. But that doesn't matter that much because at the end, Apple Health um, um, for the iOS ecosystem is kind of the commando central, um, which like you can use to connect almost everything, right? So what I do is, of course, Garmin reports to um, Apple Health and then Apple Health Kit um, reports to WeThings HealthMate. And that's how I'm getting the step data and, and my export activities in here. Then my fitness pal, um, as I said, I connected simply because I am tracking occasionally, sometimes uh, uh, calories for a while. Um, works for me, it's very effective to, to lose weight. It's yeah, you can only ma you can only manage what you measure. And as soon as I start counting calories, my weight starts dropping. I get much more disciplined, and um, yeah, that's that's kind of gamification that works. So I could also connect Strava, but there's no benefit since um, yeah, Strava is also just getting Garmin data. I have a Strava account, but yeah, it's just the same data that anyway is already coming via Health um, Runkeeper. I'm not using and Nest. I'm also not using for smart devices. So that's pretty much it. But as I said, at the end, health, health kit is the integration that you need and um, that fixes everything else. Yeah, I think that's pretty much what you have um, in the app. Maybe one thing I, I, I can still show and that's um, here in the general settings there you can set stuff like units, etc. If you want to have metric units or pound, um, etc. Clear. Um, but more important, here you have the option to export all health data. And this is quite interesting because it really, it sends you a link. And with that link, you, be, you get uh, download data and you get 
all your data, all your measurements in a folder. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's pretty neat. So that's, as I said, I mean, I, I mentioned it before, we think really goes to lengths to um, enable you to get your data also off their system and use it in different forms. And I love this and um, yeah, I can maybe show um, how this looks, um, but yeah, it's pretty much just a, a folder um, with CSV files for all of the measurements um, that you take. And then of course you can do with it as you please. Yeah, so that's pretty much uh, what is there to say about the app. So let's talk a bit more about accuracy and comparisons. So this video is already getting quite long. Let's bring it home and talk about the most crucial topic, the accuracy of the body composition measurement. So the gold standard in body composition measurement is a DEXA scan. A DEXA scan is essentially a low intensity X-ray. So this is me on the DEXA table in 2017 when I did a DEXA for the first time. Um, you see it's, uh, yeah, it, there's a bit bondage involved. Um, your feet get fixed. Sometimes you get a, a block between your knees too. And then you have to lay very still um, while the machine slowly um, yeah, moves over your body and measures um, the inside. So the result then um, is an output that looks like this. So this is me in 2017. Um, on the X, um, um, the orange part is fat, um, red part is muscle. Um, of course, obviously you can see the bones. And um, yeah, then behind it, there's a software, an algorithm that essentially measures um, the different parts and estimates how much body fat you have, how much bone mass and uh, how much um, lean mass, muscle mass. So I did this deck for the first time in 2017 and um, yeah I did one now recently in um, end of January so this is the report um, that I received so this is the new one uh, there are slight differences between the 2017 one and um, the one that I made now nevertheless it was still pretty depressing so my total body fat percentage here um, on the 27th of January when I did this um, DEXA scan was 31.3%. Um, yeah, a whooping 27.7 kg of fat that I carry um, around with me. So how did I measure on the other devices? So this is a bit of an overview. So this is um, what you see on the right hand side um, in an Excel table, um, you see the differences between the two DEXA scans. So, I mean, it's quite nice. Um, within the six years, um, I lost quite some body fat, gained quite a bit of lean mass, but um, I gained also a little bit of fat around my trunk. So a typical um, yeah, aging, you um, gain a bit in the midsection, but uh, my training paid off and um, at least I lost overall um, some fat. And um, yeah, especially in the arms and legs. Trunk, unfortunately, the other way. So trunk, I gained uh, a kilo of fat. But um, yeah, quite, quite interesting, right? So I gained overall weight um, during that time, but uh, I also gained lean mass. So now let's look um, across um, the, like the, the measurements of we things, Omron and Tanita. So of course I, um, since I did the um, DEXA scan on January 21st, um, while I was on holiday in Malaysia, um, I only took now the next measurements um, that I took once returning to Hong Kong. So 29th of January till 10th of February. But you see, WeThink's body scan has me at a body fat percentage between 20.7 and 19.8. So the down uh, what trend is nice um, because I started uh, a big diet after getting my results um, 
And yeah, it's, it's, I mean, in the meantime, I'm significantly down. Um, I think Omron has me at 16% body fat right now, 16.7 or something. So I lost significant um, uh, weight and, and body fat. But this is, um, yeah, pretty much in the week after um, doing um, the scan. And yeah, I mean, there's a 10% difference in body fat. And that's, of course, pretty bad. So it's pretty normal that electrical impedance body fat scales are off and underestimate um, body fat, especially in obese people. So I'm not obese, I would say. But of course, I have a relatively strange body structure um, being relatively lean on most of my body parts and then having um, yeah, an overweight uh, midsection. And I guess that this is uh, the, the main issue. However, um, the Omron, my 12-year-old body fat scale, also with the handle, um, is much closer to the dexa. It's still off by 5%. But 5% is much more also in what uh, like the scientific studies um, that I cited in my writ written review um, have as a um, ob often observed um, difference between electrical impedance and DEXA. So yeah, it's it's of course, it's, it's painful um, to spend 399 euro on a brand new device and then see that um, it looks as if a 12-year-old low-cost device is better. And I mean, of course, it's just my personal experience. It could be different um, for somebody else with a different body type. But yeah, for me personally, this is definitely not great. Um, yeah, just to, to round it up, um, I also did um, a test on a Tanita MC780. So that's a, the, um, that's a body fat monitor, um, quite a comprehensive one, expensive, multiple um, thousand US dollar um, that uh, is in my gym. And um, yeah, so the Tanita, of course, I also only measured a single day because I can't go to the gym every day there and, and use the device. But um, it's pretty much exactly in between WeThings and Omron. So if we look over it, WeThings roughly 10% off from the DEXA scan, Omron roughly 5% off, and um, yeah, the Danita around 8% off. So yeah, not particularly happy. So where exactly um, did we get it off? Yeah, primarily on the trunk. So um, if we look into one of the measurements that I took around those days, um, there you see that the muscle mass in the trunk um, was estimated by the we things um, with 35.3 kg. And if you look at um, what the DEXA has me, yeah, so it's lean mass, including bone mass 28. So there's a seven kg difference in terms of lean mass. And that's of course all going to the body fat, right? So pretty much the estimate of the we things um, in regards to my body fat that I carry around my trunk is just way off. Huh? I mean, <laughs> yeah, seven kg difference. So it just believes I have a lot of lean mass um, around there. And that's, um, yeah, that's bad. Um, if you look at arms, 8.4 kg. If we um, add up here um, yeah, lean mass with um, um, bones, then we're exactly um, at 8 kg. So that's yeah, much closer. And legs, 23.2. Um, we are here roughly yeah, 23.5. So also this is relatively close. So pretty much... Uh, muscle percentage for legs and arms, pretty close, but then the torso completely off. So, yeah, what I do, what what do I do with this? So it's it's tricky, right? So I mean, of course, I still will um, use the wee things, and um, I will definitely do a new DEXA scan when I have the opportunity to and see how with all my weight loss and, and mus muscle, like, I mean, body composition change, um, the difference changes. So 
what would be a good result would be of course if the difference is the same. So if we now had 10% when I did the DEXA in January and um, if I am now doing a DEXA or um, and it would be um, showing 26% and the gap is the same, yeah, then it's great because then I can continue to use the Wii things and I know that I just have to add 10% to get a realistic um, idea of my body fat percentage. Yeah, if it, the difference is changing a lot, yeah, then pretty much the Wii things becomes fairly um, useless for me, right? If it's, it's um, then the only thing that I can still see is, is the trend of the body composition but that's uh, not providing a lot of information. Yeah, so that's pretty much uh, what I can say about um, this whole accuracy topic. And um, yeah, it's disappointing. And at the same time, yeah, it would be great if uh, anybody is out there who believes they have a better product or they have a solution, um, reach out. Because at the end, the electrical impedance sensors they should be similar in the different devices so maybe there's there's certain it's a, that's a technology that's out like since the 70s right so there is no there is no quantum leap um i think um and then there is the algorithm the formula that is used to interpret the electrical impedance measurements and turn them into estimates for body fat and i think that this is something where yeah where the differences are between the different devices um, and also where differences are between different body types. That's why the bigger um, scales, they have to um, switch to athletic mode. So if you're fairly athletic, um, you can change to athletic mode. Then already it uses a different formula um, because yeah, if you're very athletic, your body already reacts differently to the electrical um, signals. And the same you could do with uh, yeah, obese uh, people because... Yeah, there was one one quite interesting um, study um, that I am um, cited. Um, they used a different formula for obese people and then got significantly better results out of um, their body fat scale. So the question is, would it not be possible to have multiple different uh, formulas in a device and uh, based on measurements, for example, that you provide um, the device or the software would use a different formula to get closer to the actual results. I think there's definitely something that, that could be done to get a better experience for all customers. But um, yeah, right now this is not the case. Um, I mentioned this also to WeThinks in my like review in the app. I haven't heard from them. Um, they haven't reacted to my written review yet, even though it's out a bit. Um, yeah, let's see if somebody picks it up somewhere. If you are an industry insider, if you have your own product that you think is better, holler at me. Very happy to test it and uh, yeah, to pit it against um, the Wii things or something um, else. And um, yeah, take a look at it. Yeah, so... Let's conclude here. Um, I think I gave you a good um, impression um, of the WeThings body scan. Maybe let's look one more time in the app. Um, there was one interesting change in the meantime, and that was that the bug that I showed um, earlier actually was uh, removed last week. So if we go on body fat and we look at the body composition breakdown, then you see I mean, you see that my body fat percentage is still way too low and my muscle mass is still um, far too high. But here with the X, I can now exit uh, this menu. That didn't work for um, the first few months um, that I used this uh, app. Yeah, like the app itself, the device, it works flawless. It's beautiful. It's, it's smooth. I like the data that I get out of it in general. Um, the only issue, of course, is the accuracy, right? So we, d we talked about it. I mean, here, my personal trend is quite nice. If um, it was definitely, I mean, for me, it's always like this. Whenever I get new devices, I'm I'm so motivated um, to make a difference and um, to really 
um, do more sport or exercise more. So if we look at here, my body um, weight um, progression, I lost a whooping 5.6 um, kg um, since I um, came back for my holiday. I mean, you start seeing it a little bit. I am a bit slimmer. And um, yeah, I think that's, of course, it's nice. It's nice that it's it ties in with my fitness pal, um, etc. So this is all beautiful. Um, yeah, as I said, uh, my values um, in terms of um, pulse wave um, velocity um, are quite stable. There's not too many swings. So um, that makes me believe that most likely everything is in order there and um, the data is somewhat reliable. Um, vascular age is completely stable there too so yeah overall um yeah it is what it is it's it's a nice device it's um technically everything is fine except for the part that body composition is honestly fairly useless in my case but the gap to the dexa scan is just too big and it's bigger than with um other way cheaper um electrical impedance um, scales and yeah I mean I think this is the question there right do you have to spend 399 um, euro or do you want to spend 399 euro or dollar for a device that doesn't get the basics right and that's that's the question that you have to answer for yourself um, if you are thinking about getting the body scan I think that's pretty much the wrap here if you have questions um Holler at me. Um, like I said in the, in the last segment, if you are in the field, if you have a solutions for the problem, why um, the scale is off so much, if you have maybe a better device, um, yeah, just send it my way. I'm very happy to try it out and compare it. And other than that, of course, read the written review if you want to um, read more details. Also see all the links um, to the scientific studies uh, regarding body um, or electrical impedance and uh, yeah if you like videos like this please just subscribe and then we hopefully um, see each other again thank you very much 